All right, g'day guys. Welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. I'm joined once again by Drew Z's nuts across my face. How are you? Nice. Nice. Nice to see you. Tis the season for drafts. After all, the draft was a couple of days ago. Um, if you haven't checked it out already, go check out our podcasts and live streams uh, doing the analysis of all that. But while we are talking about the draft theme, we're going to take a look back at the 2014 AFL draft and we're going to redraft the top 10. That draft was stacked and there was lots of steals all throughout it. So, you know, a reshuffle off that draft. Draft. It's going to be interesting. Could have made for lots of different dynamics in today's current AFL climate. So what we'll do is I'll tell you the original top 10 uh, as we go, and then we're going to redraft the top 10 using the same teams as best we can. Pick one was Paddy McCartan to St. Kilda, followed by Angus Brayshaw and Christian Petrarca at pick two and three. Pick four was Jared Pickett to the GWS Giants before Collingwood took Jordan Degoe. Six was Caleb Marchbank and Ahern also joined the Giants at seven. And then Peter Wright joined the Gold Coast Suns. At pick nine, we had Darcy Morgo as a father son to the Pies. And then finally, at pick 10, Nakaya Kokotu, who just joined the Brisbane Lions, went to Geelong. But yeah, obviously some of those players didn't pan out, but there were some uncut gems. <laughs> I said that last time, didn't I? I don't know why I say uncut gems. It's yeah. not even the right saying. Deeper in the draft, there were many a steal. So, you know, GWS and other teams could have had way better players and we're going to get into that right now. In particular, I think the guy who goes pick one will surprise you to see where he actually was drafted in 2014. Watch to the end. Stay off to true footy. All right, starting at pick 10, I'm going to go with the Gold Coast Suns who didn't actually have pick 10 on the night, but it will make sense later on because we have bids and stuff in this as well. But at pick 10, I'm going with Dan Butler. Obviously, he went at pick 67 to Richmond and he's bolted into my top 10, which is an impressive performance. He's had 77 goals from 59 games at AFL level and we know he's a premiership player from the 2017 flag. With the Richmond, of course, he got traded to the Saints this year for a late third rounder, I think it was. He 29 goals in his 19 games this year and he was leading goal kicker so he's done enough to bolt this year into my top 10 yeah he really burst onto the scene this year didn't he jesse he's obviously stepped out of that premiership side at richmond come to the saints and it's been a real good addition um in hindsight now after this season definitely should have gone top 10 very hot it is very hot all right drews you got pick nine and the gws giants who you got now if i was to redraft <laughs> no <laughs> gws at pick nine Jakey Lever. So he was pick 14, so only five picks apart. But on his day, one of the best intercept marks in the comp. Obviously, played in that grand final side in 2017 for Adelaide. Lots of potential when Melbourne snipped him up, brought him back home. And yeah. Yeah, that forced vasectomy was brutal. <laughs> <laughs> he has been injured off and on, I think. He's found it hard to like have a good run of games. But on his day... One of the better halfbacks in the comp. Probably the ninth best player in this draft in hindsight. Yeah, I think uh, he got a massive deal to go to Melbourne and then did his ACL. So he probably had, a, like you said, like not a lot of momentum there. But um, yeah, if you're redrafting it now, he definitely goes top 10 or so. Mm -hmm. Next up, because GWS had two picks in a row, they're picking again. And I'm going to take Braden Maynard from the Collingwood Footy Club. He has played 116 games at the level after being drafted at pick 30 in that 2014 draft. He was nearly all Australian in 2020. He had an absolute breakout year. It's just a really good sort of tough defender with pretty good skills coming out of the back half a lot of people said he had a breakout year so i think we're gonna we're just starting to see the start of how good maynard could become at the moment i have him at pick eight but obviously it remains to be seen where we'll be in a couple of years good rise. although collingwood are looking stinky heading into the next season but we'll see mm. we'll see nearly all australian this year as you said nearly a premiership player in 2018 He's just a nearly player at this stage. Yeah. Let's see if he can ramp it up. Absolutely crunched by Liam Ryan on that day. Yeah. Well. And uh, got blocked by Willie Rioli, so suck shit. <laughs> Haven't we all been blocked by Willie before? No. <laughs> <laughs> Now, this is where it gets spicy, because Collingwood had the seventh pick. Well, going off the bids and whatnot, yeah. it's all confusing. But <laughs> Caleb Dan <laughs> seventh pick, the seventh best player of this draft class. Stumbled on that letter there. That's all right. It's Caleb Daniel. Had an absolutely cracking 2020. Was he in all Australia? He was, yeah. He was. Short boy. And yeah, seventh best player in the 2014 draft. Shortest player in the league, fun fact. Nice. He's played 109 games, and he's still obviously young, and he's won a premiership in that 2016 side. Great player. Yeah, he was super good in that 2016 team. Had a bit of a dip uh, in the years after that. Obviously, didn't quite recapture it as the dogs kind of fell off a cliff. 
but he really recaptured that form um, with his probably the best skills out of anyone in the back half mm. coming out of defence um, this year, and that's why he got All-Australian. Yeah, absolute steal for pick 46. Yeah. Next up, i got GWS back on the board. They had three top 10 picks this year. They're going to take a kid they originally took anyway with Jack Steele, but he went at pick 24 in this draft, not pick 6, which is where he's elevated to for us. He played 17 games for them, followed by 80 for St. Kilda, which surprised me. I didn't realise he played that many for St. Kilda. He had a breakout year this year, winning All-Australian um, in the midfield position and won the Saints BNF. So a real breakout year, and it was one where maybe around the league people didn't appreciate how good Jack Steele was, but now he's a bit more of a household name. So, uh, yeah, in the redraft, he goes top six, which is uh, pretty stinky. <laughs> <laughs> you were doing so well, Dave. I just fucked Which up. is very <laughs> stinky. Just... <laughs> so, we believe the fifth best player in this draft is Jordan Degoe. So Melbourne held this pick, apparently. Well, <laughs> it's it's a Melbourne pick because we have a father-son and an academy pick coming up as Got well. You. So Melbourne had two and three, but in reality it's pushed it back to five. So in this I scenario, see. Degoe to Melbourne at pick five. One of the most explosive, exciting players in the AFL right now. Big player on the big stage, electrifies the MCG crowd. Melbourne could bloody use him. I'll tell you what. Tell you what. Yeah, need a good young forward that yeah electrifies the MTG, but he's on it for Collingwood instead. Huge grand final performance. Again, didn't get there, but, you know, one of the best rising players in the comp. Yeah, I think it really shows his talent where in the grand final, he's well held for most of the day by Will Schofield, but he gets three opportunities, three half opportunities to score goals, and he kicks three amazing goals and nearly wins Collingwood the game. So, big fan of Jordan Dugowie. Um He's got a bright future ahead. Next up, we've got Sydney, um, and I'm going to give them pick four with Isaac Heaney. Now, the rules around academies were different then. Sydney actually matched Heaney with pick 18 under the rules. I think they changed the next year with Callum Mills. But in this scenario, we're just doing it under the current rules. I'd say Sydney would match this bid. Probably should have started at the top of the draft so that Melbourne mm -hmm. having pick five makes sense. But we were already too far into this video. <laughs> <laughs> but um, he's had 102 games for 105 goals in a team that for the last few years has been rebuilding as well. And he's also had some injury concerns. During 2020, he started the year really well and then and, uh, obviously had it ruined by injury. But it, uh, to me, he looked like he was about to take the next step alongside, mm. you know, how Petrarca blew up this year. Yeah. Um, and then he, I feel like Heaney was kind of robbed of that a little bit. So that's why he still gets an early pick for me. Some people might not agree with him going over to Goey, and fair enough. Let us know in the comments what you think. That is a tough one, but um, as far as I'm concerned, they're pretty neck and neck anyway. Yeah, for sure. I think if Heaney was playing for Collingwood and Degoe was at Sydney, it'd be, yeah, roles reversed. It's yeah. just the exposure that they get in the media. Yeah, Heaney, yeah, has he? No, he hasn't been All-Australian yet. I don't he? know. I don't think he's been All-Australian, but I, I could see him putting up like a 40-goal season and then running through the guts if he was playing yeah. at an established club, which he's not. So pick three, Collingwood, father-son, Darcy Moore. So he was originally pick number nine. So moves up six picks. So not too bad of, it wasn't a big steal, so to say. He was, yeah, in that top 10. So he's obviously highly touted going into it. But yeah, he's turned out to be an absolutely great player. He's going to be the halfback for Collingwood for the next eight or so years until he retires by the looks of it. So, yeah. yeah. Great pick. Good rebounding uh, player for a tall. And he was kind of drafted as a bit more of a forward, if I'm not mistaken. Kind of like a forward ruck almost. Yeah. And then he's kind of found his niche playing back. But uh, yeah, he's really one of their most important players. Actually all Australian this year um, and he's played 89 games. So, you know, plenty of footy left in him great pick all right we're down to the final two all right pick two melbourne demons still hold this pick mm -hmm. i'm giving it to christian petrarca i think he went pick three in the original redraft uh in the original draft rather um but i think like this is the one that the saints will really look back and it will sting their anus because <laughs> they obviously went patty mccartan which we'll allude to later but christian petrarca for me probably the best small from this draft he kind of exploded in 2020 he did his acl early doors when he started at the d's and there was a bit of talk that Maybe he's another lost talent to injury because he was just such this prodigious talent. Like high risk, high reward. Mm -hmm. um, does his ACL, but fights really hard to get back um, and you know fulfill that potential. Back end of 2019 was really strong. I think he was the leading goal kicker for the days. And then in 2020 he broke out and was I, believe, I think he was all Australian, uh, best and fairest winner as well, if I'm not mistaken. Purely like one of the best forward mids in the comp as well. Yeah, in terms of output across the year, he's actually not that far behind Dusty. I think in yeah. terms of what they produce over the whole year. So Petrarca could have considered conceivably go pick one in this but we do have one guy just ahead yeah so as you said leading goal kicker all australian this year trajectory is going up for young petrarca and it's going up with melbourne so we see him having a good career at melbourne if you know fingers crossed he doesn't get injured and do another acl or jesus. anything like that <laughs> what do you mean jesus i had my fingers crossed Sounds for him. threatening nah don't do your acl but nah yeah and he we've got him remaining at melbourne in this in this redraft and yeah up the days who was the best player in this draft the redraft who would the saints take now 
Harris Andrews. Yeah. Clear choice. Pick 61, Lions got him for. One of the biggest draft steals in recent history. One of the best fullbacks, if not the best fullback in the comp right now. Can't kick goals on him. He's just too so bloody good. I believe he's actually their vice captain as well for the last couple of years and uh, all Australian for the last couple of years as well, if mm. I'm not mistaken. He's only 24 years old, which is crazy. He's been this good since he was 22 yeah. as a key back. It's, that's pretty rare. So, yeah, prodigious talent. An academy player, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, probably I'd, off the top of my head, say the best academy player from any academy, actually. Yeah. To be honest, it's not an old sort of um, system. So, mm. Harris Andrews, the premier fullback of the competition, you could certainly argue. Certainly the best mm. young key back in the comp. Um, clear choice for pick one, I would say. Another player that's on that trajectory. He's been drafted. He's hitting his prime and so are Brisbane. Flourish. All right, guys, that is the top 10 that we've come up with. I will go through it again once again for you. Uh, pick one, we went with Harris Andrews to St. Kilda Footy Club, followed by Petrarca and the father-son Darcy Moore. Isaac Heaney and Jordan Degoe, very hard to split, went four and five. Six was Jack Steele, and then you had a few defenders in Caleb Daniel, Braden Maynard, and Jake Lever make up the next three before finally one of the best small forwards in the comp, Dan Butler, slides into our top 10. So there you go. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to see more videos like this on the channel, let us know because I'm fucking probably going to do them anyway. If you haven't already, go check out Drewzy's channel. Just passed 3,000 subs about a month back as well. He's grinding hard, making some great content. And uh, yeah, you'll see myself um, on his channel a fair bit, I'm sure, if he keeps me around. Yeah, well, we just filmed a video on that channel. Yep. Top five AFL teams with the most potential. And these players' names that we've spoke about here may, may arise in that video. So if you're interested in that, go watch it. Put it on the end card. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm really lazy with those. Nah, nah. Nah, that's a cool, cool. All right, cool. Nah, no doubt, no doubt. Thanks so much for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Love you. Love you too. <laughs>